direct from San Francisco, California, in the heart of the Tenderloin, welcome, welcome to the Given and Podcast. Podcast, San Francisco Lockdown Edition, a subsidiary of Kiffin and Productions in association with Kiffin and Studios, online at KiffinAndPodcast.com. And now, Kiffin and. So today we are talking about the Chinese Communist Party. And Ange, I'm a little antsy about this because I feel <laughs> like this is not what we want to be talking about if we want to, you know, get monetized. Because that, that's the quickest way to demonetize. But you say that this is pertinent and actually is really important here in San Francisco. It's really important to hear in San Francisco, especially after going to Chinatown this morning. I mean, it's like a, a deserted Western town there. I mean, you could have heard a whistle and a tumbleweed just roll by on the street, you know? Let's start with the viral videos from, there was one from like February 25th of a, a Chinese man collecting cans in the Bayview area of San Francisco and they videotaped him getting harassed and beat. Then there was a second video of a bunch of people jumping a Chinese person in Chinese, in Chinatown in front of a whole bunch of other Chinese American people who perhaps English wasn't their first language, but they were all senior citizens. They were all terrified. You could tell. This all came between the announcement that the virus existed and that you know the first cases were beginning to pop up in other countries. And San Francisco has such a hateful history when it comes to the chi American Chinese population. I feel like we just really need to sort some stuff out here and be very clear what the differences are. When this first happened, it was right before the big New Year celebration. And the whole yeah. city was encouraging people to participate, to get out there. They saw the decline that was already mm -hmm. happening in Chinatown mm -hmm. before even the rumors of uh, coronavirus really became like a big thing. Well, if we're going to be honest, though, there's also a BART project that just finished up on Stockton Street that heavily impacted the merchants in Chinatown already. So there was a lot of empty store spaces because of that project. That's right. It, and it felt very empty. North Beach was feeling very empty right before everything happened. It, it just yeah, felt like a yeah. lot of places had boarded up before. Well, and there's a lot of animosity between the, you know, North Beach and Chinatown edge right up against mm, each other. And historically, right. there's been a lot of animosity. North Beach is a, a, a lot of American Italian, Italian Americans. Um, and of course, Chinatown is Chinese Americans or, Amer you know, depending on what generation you are. Right. So, you know, all of that stuff was already going on. And in my head, I'm thinking the people living in San Francisco have just because of their descent or perhaps where they were born. Right. Doesn't make them a part of the virus. That no. Was, you know, Not started in China. Well, that's where you start getting into all of these like mixed terminologies. Yes. You know, like um, China. It, there's China, there's the People's Republic of China, and there's the Chinese Communist Party. And there's people of Chinese descent too. I have a f Bart friend who was a uh, Chinese born Vietnamese. And, and he, well, he was a, a Vietnamese born person of Chinese descent. Does that make sense? He was yeah. born in Vietnam, but then during the, 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 he was his whole family was ousted and so he came to san francisco as a kind of a political refugee i mean i didn't go yeah. too deep into his story he's you know but so there's a lot of those people too you know from taiwan and hong kong and places right. who fled the ccp by definition the term chinese refers to people and culture originating in or relating to chinese civilization and heritage right it doesn't necessarily mean that they were even born or from the geographic entity of China itself. You know, it, it, there's just like I would say I am Scottish American. Right. Because, you know, five generations back, somebody lived in Scotland. So there you go. <laughs> and when we talk about the People's Republic of China, you say that it's geographic, but it's also that's the political Entity of it? So the the People's Republic of China is what happened when the Chinese Communist Party took over China. 
and there are, I believe, a total of eight political parties in China, and the Chinese Communist Party has been the ruling party for, you know, a gazillion years. The CCP. And here's, yeah, here's a fun fact. One of those eight ruling political parties in China was founded in San Francisco What? in 1924. What? I know. My favorite thing to do is whenever there's something controversial going on in the world, I want to see what everybody else is saying about it. So I'll get on YouTube and I'll watch like the Australian news, the German news, the <laughs> yes, Japanese yes, news, yes, yes. you know. And I got hung up watching this um, China in Focus channel on YouTube that does a news show called NTD. Okay, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And so they're expats. They're, it's a, NTD is a Taiwanese-owned um, media company, but not necessarily Taiwanese-based. I'm not sure about that. Um, so they're expats, and they're very critical of the um, CCP, which is the Chinese Communist Party. And so I thought it was really interesting, while we're having this whole situation over here with what our president was deciding to refer to this uh, virus as, that they're calling it the CCP flu or the CCP virus. It is the, chi the Chinese. I follow a uh, Lao Wai and Serpent Za 86, and they do a YouTube channel called ADB China. And it's been the same thing since January and February. They have been talking about this. And it wasn't about it being Chinese. It was about yeah. the Communist Party. And that was their big focus on how, uh, from what it said that these expats say, and I'm sure you saw the same thing, that the whole the whole government has been changing there in the last few years. Like things have definitely changed in China. Well, and not only that, it's the CCP virus because they controlled all of the information yes. the rest of the world had yes. about the virus from the very beginning. They suppressed a ton of the information from what I perceived, from what I right. saw and online. People who were whistleblowers got taken out of their homes. Exactly. The doctor who, who raised the flag, mm -hmm. you know, and then, so I also want to let everybody else know, everybody else know, also know that in, in looking into the media coverage of what's coming in and out of um, the People's Republic of China regarding the CCP virus, uh, that TikTok. <laughs> I love is, TikTok. <laughs> tic, TikTok is PRC controlled. And they have censored their own citizens regarding COVID on that platform. So just a heads up, everybody who's TikToking their little lives away, China is learning. Well, let's be more specific. The Chinese, the People's Republic of China is learning an awful lot about us. Like how good a dancers TikTok. we are. Like, oh, our yeah. rhythm, our choice in music, they're going to fit right in with us, which... That, you know, that comes to an end. And if you yeah. don't know that, that I'm sorry to tell you, China has already got control of our media. I mean, yes. did you, they, they yeah. made the, the basketball with the, I don't watch basketball, the NBA, like, kowtow to them. Like, there were people they, who spoke up against them in the NBA and they were forced to apologize I feel like, though, that a lot of that's going to be changing here in the future because the world's really beginning to hold, you know, the the, the CCP and the CRP, the People's Republic of China, financially responsible. Their trade embargoes are being placed on them. You know, they did some, they did some, in addition to perhaps not sharing the news that they should have shared as quickly as they should have, um, they also have laws much like we have that enforce within their country companies have to respond to in a specific manner but it's different there companies there have to just completely give over control and follow the demand of the government versus their president issuing an edict and then there being a legal process in in the People's Republic of China, they just marched into these manufacturing companies that had this PPE that had already been ordered by the rest of the world and said, nope, this is ours. Now let's add, in addition to that, now that we've talked about how wonderful all of the people in Chinatown are in San Francisco, and these are not the people you should be pointing your fingers at, and you certainly shouldn't be angry at any single person or people, it's a, it's a government, about the 
the not expats that do live in the United States that did do fundraising within their companies and, and right. bought a whole bunch of PPE oh here to send to China. Seeing some of the beautiful like, was... videos out of China, like the community singing to each other and like, you know, the people of Wuhan and how they were just go Wuhan, you can do it. You know, that was beautiful to me. And I don't know. Andrew, I, I, I feel like we live in a bubble sometimes. I know you question that. Some of that is public I, I was, propaganda. No, I, was, I was watching it today, and it's entirely different. I was watching news out of China today showing that they're building walls between apartment buildings in Wuhan. Oh, really? They, Tell they me more, it, and Tell me more. Yeah. They said that they were going to test 11, um, 11 million people in, like, four days in Wuhan. And then when they showed citizen reporters with their phones, you know, sneaking camera shots, they were taking the swabs and putting them into um, a, a – the little plastic envelope and no names or anything on them and just dropping them all into the same container. So they're testing, but they're not testing for contract tracing, contact tracing, excuse me. What are they testing for if they're not to keeping track of whose test belongs to who? Because they're not. Well, here's my theory is that maybe it's just something to make people feel it, safe. I'm not and sure. And Wuhan is under lockdown. You should know they're they're not afraid to speak up over there either at any cost. Well, they've I, got I a admire, huge. I admire the people that are under the thumb mm. right now that are speaking up because there's a lot of those videos coming out too, saying you're wrong, this is wrong, this is stupid, this is unfair. It's very brave. Incredibly brave, you know. Yeah. And and so I think we're going to see a different world. But I think it's really, really, really important to remember, especially in our bubble, which is in a bigger bubble and a bigger bubble and a bigger bubble, which we all affect each other. When it comes to business and getting back to business in San Francisco, we're neighbors, we're community, mm. and we're all in it together here. And there is no fingers to be pointed in this town at each other. I I feel sometimes like I am in a bubble because when you live and work in San Francisco and half of your friends and I mean you just feels like everybody is so diverse so I don't feel like I see a ton of finger pointing or, or, or racism like maybe I'm crazy maybe I just hang out with cool people maybe I'm living in a crazy bubble but I feel like the further you get away from San Francisco it does get a little crazier out there and I'm always surprised by it if that makes sense like whoa, it, oh, yeah. it, whoa. whenever I go back to the Midwest and visit I, yeah. I, I I'm like ah what huh what you can't do that that's wrong and when I, and I get if, very yeah. self-righteous <laughs> when when then when I started getting paranoid about the COVID I remember thinking immediately well you can't be afraid of Chinese people here some people here are like fourth like my my coworker, she's fourth generation Chinese American. You know what I mean? Like, and she has absolutely and experienced some of the, the when the co, yeah, yeah. That's what I, yeah, that's what I, I came across too. Is people dirty looks, snide comments, that my uh, Chinese American friends have experienced as well. You know, and and the thing is, is it's, it's. It, it makes me so angry and it baffles me like why like you can't just say it's them right. like there are people who come from Italy who've got the disease there's people who come from all over Europe you could have caught it from your grandma who's not Chinese you know what I mean I just it baffles me well yeah let's talk about let's talk about them defining in New York that that the strain of COVID that showed up in New yes. York that the governor is. Cuomo was begging about was from Europe so, you know, we can point our fingers at, at whatever we want to for as long as we want to, but none of the people that we're pointing our fingers at in San Francisco had anything to do with what has happened. That being said, and, they it and feels like to me everything. the Chinese American community, at least Chinatown, to me, like it felt like it was emptying out before the general population know. And in my opinion, it's because they were reading about it and they knew about it ahead of time. Like it was kind of like, Ugh. Let's stay away. You said you had, um, you'll see uh, your your can collector who you you said is Chinese American. And you said, but you said that she just hasn't been around. She recycles in your community. Okay. So there's a phenomena in San Francisco that of, of there's a lot of people that recycle 
a lot of different people that recycle, but the constants that have like, this is my route. Uh -huh. <laughs> I know when this garbage can goes out. Kind. Um, there's a lot of Asian ladies that have made a business out of yeah. it. And I mean, she, I had a regular lady for, for three years. She'd come down our street. And it kind of started when the city rolled out the new recycling bins that have the actual locks attached to the lid so you're not losing the paddle lock so that kind of put a damper on it for her so she kind of slowed down but she hadn't slowed down seeing me because I save every can and every bottle right. for her right and um, I have not seen her since the shelter in place order has been given and upon inspection or or observation I guess would be a better word I haven't seen any any recyclers except the homeless the street people and they're mm. being crazy about it like what do you mean they'll dump over they dump over every single garbage can mm. in the neighborhood to get a single can okay you know the the professional recyclers would you know move from one can to another and put it all nice back back nice and neat yeah. and they, they were pros they knew what they were doing they had tongs they had special protective clothing that they decided you know plastic gloves and stuff like that and I haven't seen her and I don't know what happened to her and I feel well you know you need to keep us up to date let us went. let us know when when she starts coming back into your neighborhood because now I'm worried about it Ange. I know I'm worried about it too and when I went over to Chinatown oh you know here's another interesting thing so um, there was one open security guard sitting in a car right there off of Grant Street in Chinatown. So I walked up to him and talked to him a little bit and I said, so are you, did the Merchants Association hire you to just kind of keep a thing on, an eye on things over here? And he's like, no, I'm watching a, a specific private property. And I was like, oh, all right, that's cool. And then I started walking back and I, I had noticed walking through on my way up that there was an occasional guy here or there that did not appear to be Asian. And that kind of stood out because I wasn't Asian and yeah. pretty much the, like five people that I saw were of Asian descent. And I start seeing these guys and they kind of look like tourists, but maybe they're homeless, but maybe they're troublemakers. And then I looked at the shoes and I realized they're wearing tactical boots. Oh. Their backpacks were tactical backpacks. Oh. So I Shoes. Do... Always look at people's shoes in San Francisco, by the way. That's how you yep. know. Yep, and so I do believe that there is additional security on behalf of, if not individual merchants, um, merchants that have pooled their money together right. to just keep an eye on on storefronts and whatnot. And I did see some movement of things beginning to prepare to open up as well. Gotcha. Just a little bit, it's like boards being moved. Um, people, doors open and people sweeping up inside like they're getting ready to open their shop. But I, I love that we're ending it on a positive note, watching Chinatown slowly start opening up again. It is. It is. I mean, and, and it's such an old neighborhood. In yeah. fact, it's the oldest and longing running Chinatown in the Western Hemisphere. And not only is it that, it's such an important part of San Francisco's history. There are so many people that came from so many different places, but the Chinese really, they're, they're, they're embedded, they're embodied in our history. San Francisco wouldn't be San Francisco had it not been for those Chinese immigrants that came here. So freak all over the, the Chinese Communist Party all you want. But remember, we're neighbors and we love each other here. Exactly. The virus and the government who currently rule China have nothing to do with and probably a lot of people who are here are here because they wanted to get away from that nasty government. I don't blame them. <laughs> so I want to talk about the final episode that we're going to do in this series of COVID-19 in San Francisco because although you feel this one has been controversial and I respect that and it, it, it is probably controversial and if it rubs somebody wrong or if it rubs somebody right, leave a review. We'll know that. We'll learn. We'll move forward. <laughs> right? I'm um, going to cry. I'm going to cry. Leave nice reviews. I can't handle it. No, I can handle it's it. Good. Sure. I'm in the we'll wrong business. You're in the wrong business. You're in the wrong business. <laughs> right? Right? You, the Kardashian moment. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> um, How dare you? The next, the next and the final one in the series is the conspiracy theories that are floating around in San Francisco. And you and I have been like throwing some stuff back and forth in direct message. That's just mm-hmm. like, I, I get it from you. And I'm like, is she serious? And I'm sure you get and then you from research you things. Go, are you serious? And then you <laughs> research it and go, oh my gosh, what is yeah. this? I can see a debate coming on on the most the biggest one that we're going to argue over, and that's the five G conspiracy. Bum, bum, bum. But there's some other really interesting ones that I can't wait to talk about. <laughs> so there's that coming up, and then what happens after we finish the last show in the series, Kiff? Oh, I think we start on a brand new series, and. Oh my gosh, what do you want to talk about? Hmm, notorious San Francisco criminals, crazy <gasps> San Francisco cults. I think crime. Oh. Notorious crimes of San Francisco history. Yeah. I'm in. Yeah. I'm in. I think yeah. that's good too. All I right. Think, I think people like The that. opinions and topics discussed in any Kiff and Anch production or show are meant to be controversial, provocative, and possibly create a conversation that is not already being had. The most important thing to remember about this production is that it has zero educational or historical value other than from a purely popular parody perspective. By listening to this podcast, you understand that it is solely for entertainment purposes. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, parodies, scholarship and research. Kiff and Anch Productions is meant to provide parody in an already difficult life. If you find no humor or entertainment in our productions, well, for goodness sakes, don't listen.